This week's piece is so amazing. I don't even have time to brag about it. Let's jump right in. Welcome to the weekly piece on the Parsha from Torah Giants on Chumash by Rabbi Yitzchak Meir Goodman. Welcome to Torah Giants on Chumash. I'm Steve Geller. This week, we're going to take a deep dive in a Pusik we're all familiar with that screams for more color. Vayamar Lakim Nase Adam. Hashem said, let us make man. The plural form of us has intrigued commentators since Midrashic days, giving rise to dozens of interpretations. Let's examine two especially interesting ones. In Maisa Hashem, Rebbe Eliezer Ashkenazi suggests that Hashem is speaking to man here. While other creatures reach their potential effortlessly by virtue of natural law, man alone, by his education and will, fashions himself himself into whatever he ultimately becomes. He can raise himself to great heights or lower himself to subhuman depths. Thus, when Hashem says, let us make man, he means do your share, use the soul and intelligence I'm giving you, and become the man you're capable of becoming, the one I intended you to become when I conceived creation. But perhaps the most literal and grammatical explanation is Ramban's. Ramban on Arpasik, the correct explanation of Naset, let us make, which is in the plural form when it should have been singular, is to teach you the following. Up until now, Hashem has created thing yesh mayayin from nothing, and he has created other beings from pre-existing material. The command concerning the cattle, totse haaretz nefesh chayelamina, let the earth bring forth the mammals after its kind. But in the case of man, he said nase adam, that is, I and the aforementioned earth, let us make man. The earth will bring the body and its elements, as it did with the cattle and beasts, and as it is also written later, v'yitzar Hashem elokim es haadam afar min haadama, that Hashem created adam from the dust of the earth. But then Hashem said, Bitzal menu kid Museno, he's creating man in his image after his likeness. Man would be similar to both. He would be made of the dust of the earth, but with an eternal soul. Next, Rabbi Goodman brings us a very familiar Medrash Rabbah on this Pasek. When Moshe was writing the Torah, he recorded the work of each and every day of creation. When he reached this verse where it is stated, and Hashem said, Nasa Adam, let us make man in our image after our likeness. He said before Hashem, master of the world, why do you give an opening to heretics? Hashem Hashem replied, write as I have dictated, gita, and he who wishes to make a mistake will make a mistake. Hashem said to Moshe, this man I created, not great or small, I make of him that if a great man ever says, why should I consult with others? They will tell him, learn from the creator who consulted with the angels. Rav Hanan Wasserman explains, if given the opportunity to invest in a business deal in which one can either make a fortune or lose every cent, a prudent investor will certainly decline the risk. Yet in our verse, Hashem teaches us a great lesson about consulting with others, but risks losing his people to heresy. Why did Hashem take this risk? Because there really is no danger, according to Rabbi Goodman. Indeed, countless generations of children have learned this verse without misunderstanding it, and millions of Jews throughout the centuries have heard it every year in the synagogues without incident. They've had no trouble extracting its lesson. Only those who seek to err will look for any excuse to shirk their responsibility as Jews, as servants of God, only they will arrive at a false interpretation, for that is what they want to hear. Such people can always find something to attack in the Torah. Therefore, Hashem did not give up an opportunity to teach faithful Jews a lesson just because of such perverse individuals for whom there's little hope anyway. Rabbi Goodman adds an insight of his own. According to Rabbi Goodman, I believe this is the message of Yirmiyahu, but this people has a heart of rebellion and revolt. They have turned away and gone. Israel's rebellion was not ideological. It was based on the inclinations of the heart. So it remains to this day. The heretic only rationalizes his abandonment of the Torah to silence his conscience. I believe this may have been the whole point of the wording of our Pasek and the Medrash Rabbah. The Harotze Lato'os Yita, he who wishes to err, will err. Who wishes to make a mistake? Only those whose choice to err serves the purpose of giving them the excuse they need to shirk their responsibilities as Jews in the service of our Creator. We could stop here and marvel at this amazing piece, but let's look briefly at Rabbi Goodman's next piece related to this one. In our first Pasuk above, Hashem was discussing the creation of Adam. In the next Pasuk, it talks about God creating Ha'adam, the man. There is a very important distinction between these two. The Baal Shem Tov records a question posed by the Ari. What keeps man's soul alive? Surely not the food he eats, yet when a human being starves to death, his soul departs, implying that the soul is nourished by material sustenance. How can this be understood? The Ari's answer, since everything was created by the word of Hashem, there is a spiritual component in every object. For example, God's command that the earth produce fruit trees resulted in a spiritual essence in every fruit. To activate this spiritual force, man must recite a bracha over the fruit he eats. By acknowledging that the fruit was created by God for his benefit, he derives both physical and spiritual energies and benefit from it. Based on this idea, the Baal Shem Tov explains that while Nas 
Ma'asa Adam was the physical man that Hashem consulted, as it were, with physical components. Ha Adam, the man, is totally spiritual, referring to man's soul. And looking carefully at the Pasik, Vayivr Elohim es Ha Adam, that only Hashem created Ha Adam, the spiritual component of man's existence. Rabbi Goodman points us to a Pasik in Devarim. Hashem subjected you to hardship and hunger and then gave you man to eat, which neither you nor your ancestors had ever known. In order to teach you that a human being does not live on bread alone, but that one may live on anything that Hashem decrees. In other words, reciting a bracha gives life and sustenance to the soul. Accordingly, when one eats without blessing Hashem, his soul shrivels up within him. Returning to our text, we may now carefully interpret the psukim in this section. First, the Torah said, Totsi ha'aretz nefesh chaya lamina, let the earth bring forth creatures of its kind. The next pasuk was v'yas elokim es chaya ha'aretz, that Hashem created the chayos. Then was our pasuk, v'yom elokim nase adam, let us make man, referring to his consultation with the earth to form man's physical body. And then finally, v'yivr elokim es ha'adam b'tzalmo, that Hashem himself created yesh me'ayin ha'adam, the spiritual component of man. Rabbi Goodman shows us that man is thus the product of a partnership between the earth, the physical, and Hashem, the spiritual, and his image will reflect his unique status. So by combining the points of the Baal Shem Tov and Ramban, all of our questions have been answered. Thank you again for watching. Once again, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, tell your friends and family to do so, so none of you miss another exciting, amazing insight from Rabbi Goodman's masterpiece, Torah Giants on Thumbish.